Thank you for joining me here at one of the best golf courses in Spain. This is Finca Cortizem. We're on the 18th hole, and this is the second video in the video series looking at how you can master the driver. Today, we're focusing on the backswing. So welcome back to the second video in this series on how you can master the driver. Once again, we are at this absolutely spectacular golf course, Finca Cortes in Spain. This is one of the top five courses in Spain. So if you're looking to play a fantastic golf course and you're in the area, this is definitely one to check out. This is the 18th hole, of par five up over the hill. Um, so really important that I get a good tee shot away. So that's exactly what we're going to talk about in this video. We're going to focus very much on the backswing because that first video talked about the setup. If you didn't see that one, I will link it in the corner here. Now, as we're talking about the backswing, um, obviously it's impossible to cover everything in, in a short video. Um, there's so many things that contribute to a good backswing, and especially when hitting the driver, there are certain things which are really, really important. So I'm going to focus on three things in this video, which I think can really help golfers um, hit the driver better, more consistently, and probably a little bit further as well. So we're going to talk a little bit about leg action. We're going to give you a very visual thing that you can work up from face on, and we're going to talk a little bit about controlling that club face. So we're hopefully all going to be in a pretty good starting position now based on that first video. So what I would like you to do, and you may well have to video your golf swing to do this, or you might be able to use a reflection or a uh, mirror, but I want you to get to the top of the golf swing, and from the top, you should be able to draw a line that goes from your lead shoulder straight through your lead knee, straight through your lead foot, as you can see there. So what's that, what's that doing for me? Well, it's doing a couple of things. It's making sure that I've got my shoulders turned fully, because as you can imagine, if I make a turn and I'm underturned with those shoulders, it becomes very difficult to do that. It's also ensuring that I'm not making any movements like this, because again, that wouldn't allow me to put that kind of line in. It's also making sure that I'm not moving too much off the ball the opposite way. So it's a very, very simple concept and checkpoint to make sure that we're coiling and rotating the body well. We would like to see in the backswing some movement in the knees. We would like to see obviously some huge turn in the shoulders, but we want to keep a nice relationship with the golf ball and have our body you know, from the ground up working very well above each other. If we start to get the knees moving incorrectly, the hips don't work correctly, the shoulders don't do the right thing, we start to get a knock-on effect through there. So what you can actually just do is take a starting position in a, in opposite a mirror or reflection, just rehearse up to the top and just see if you can put that visual line from your lead shoulder straight through your knee, through your foot. It's going to almost tick off a lot of things that we'd like to see in that backswing and leave you in a very, very strong position to then deliver the club in the downswing, which we're going to cover in the next video. So the second thing I want to cover here is just how we use the legs in the backswing. There are not many golfers that I coach. There are a couple who overuse the legs in the backswing. I spend more time trying to free up someone's rotation because there's too much tension, there's too much restrictions in there. Now, there's a couple of examples um, of golfers who don't move their legs a lot. Jason Day is a good example, but there are more examples of golfers who move their legs a lot. The two that I would think of the top of my head, Bubba Watson and Dustin Johnson. So if you look at those two golfers, they have huge amounts of changing knee flex, huge amounts of rotation. You'll often see a big gap between the knees. And what they're doing is they're really coiling their body up, ready to unwind that on the downswing. Many golfers uh, that I come across are under the impression that in the backswing we should create this coiled feeling, this feeling of resistance. Um, and that's not really the case because we can create that in the downswing. So lots of golfers that I see are kind of making this backswing, trying to feel like I've got that tension across my body. But often what that we find is that just restricts movement. I would actually like you at the top of the golf swing to feel as if there's no restrictions in the body at all. You feel very relaxed, you feel very coiled and turned. But as I start down, if I initiate my golf swing in the right way, I can create that tension in the downswing. So we're not suggesting that we don't need it. I would just like to see it created in transition and the downswing, because I think what that does, it helps you make a fuller turn. It helps the hands and the club travel a greater distance. We need more time when we're hitting the driver. It helps us create more width. All of these things are really beneficial with the driver. If I stand there with a, with a 50 degree wedge, being a little narrow, being a little short, it's not really going to impact me too much because it's a short club and I'm looking for a downward attack angle. More important with the driver that we give ourselves a greater range of motion, more time in order to control that golf club and deliver it as we want it. So free those hips up, let them turn, let those knees change flex, 
And that's our second point. Our final point is just to make sure that we can get this thing under control, the club head. And when we say the club head, we're really talking about the club face and where that points. I am going to really struggle with the driver if I cannot control where the club is pointing at impact. And if I want to control it at impact, I need to get it controlled through the golf swing as well. So common would be to see a golfer with a face is open at the top. Open would be where the toe hangs very much down towards the ground. Closed would be where the face points more up towards the sky. Now, as I change between an open and a closed face, I'm sure you can see what's happening here in doing that. It's my wrist position that's changing. You'll notice that my arm's not really moving, my body's not moving. It's purely my wrist that's changing that club face. So where would we like that club face to be? Well, it really will depend on each golfer, but slightly stronger, so face pointing a little bit more to the sky, I would see having more benefits than a face being more open. In order to get that face pretty square or neutral, we would need that lead wrist to be pretty flat. Now, at setup, you'll notice that that lead wrist is not flat. There is a shape in that wrist. So setup, there's a cup. Many golfers will maintain that all the way up to the top. The face is open. We're now compensating in our downswing. So between setup and the top of the golf swing, we would like to flatten off that wrist. Here is a simple way that I want you to think about in terms of how that will be the case. Take a starting position and point your fingers slightly in front of the golf balls. That's putting some slight cup in this lead wrist. Now, when you get to the top, I want you to put as much bend in that trail wrist as you can. There we go. And you can see how my lead wrist went flat, my trail wrist bent. Now, if I do that again, you can see that cup there and I've taken it out. If you ask me where I did that, there's not really a point. I didn't do it in the first foot or here or here. It just was a natural progression through there. And that's how I want you to think about it in your goal swing. Generally speaking, we'd like that to happen from the takeaway. I would like to see that lead wrist starting to flatten out by this point, but I don't really want you to think about it happening at a specific point because that's not really going to be the best way for you to create a rhythm and a, and a you know, good tempo in your backswing. Just try and create a backswing move, movement where that wrist would go from this extended position up towards this flat position where my right wrist is very bent, my left wrist is almost arched. So there's three things we've covered in this video. Uh, like I said right at the start, you know, I'm not expecting to do all these things in the next goal swing. I'm expecting you to maybe take on this information, apply the bits to your game which suit you, ignore the bits that don't really apply to you, Take what you need from these videos and use them in practice to help you progress that driver swing. Right, let's see if we can uh, hit one. A lot of talking in this video. Let's see if we can actually demonstrate one. Par five here, so I need to get a good drive away. And I would not have that one back. It's absolutely perfect. So backswing in the driver, pretty important. If we get the backswing right, We've got much, much better chance of producing a good downswing and good drives like that one. Huge thank you to Finca Cord Sim for hosting me for a few days. The course, as I'm sure you'll agree, looks fantastic. The weather's been beautiful as well. Back over in the UK, it's raining and pretty windy right now. So nice to get out here and do some videos. Also, would love to hear your comments on this video series. This was only the second video. Three more to come, helping you master the big stick and hit more fairways with a little bit more distance. Usual stuff is down below. Comments box, like button. And over there, click that link and that will, be, uh, that will allow you to be a free subscriber of the channel. Thanks for watching.